John, I was walking around the Qualcomm stand earlier, and I mean, everything is there. Sub six millimeter wave, upper mid band, even sub terahertz. So maybe break out for me what the close in priority is for you. Um, there are many close in priorities, and they, they all need to kind of happen um, at the same time. And so one of, the, one of the biggest focuses is on opening spectrum for 6G. And we were the first to identify more than two years ago the importance of opening up the 7 to 16 gigahertz range. And at MWC 2022, the FCC chair identified that band specifically for 6G deployments. And at the recent World Radio Conference, the 7.1 to 8.4 band, the lowest part of the band, which was our prime focus, was identified internationally for study for World Radio Conference 27, and therefore it looks today to be a prime 6G band. Moving to millimeter wave, what we have on the floor is all of the improvements that we're implementing to further support the proliferation of the technology, helping with the um, range of the technology to, to continue to improve that. 5G advanced will use millimeter wave, 6G as well will operate in the millimeter wave bands. And then of course, there's still efforts to try to open lower spectrum bands in the lower three gigahertz, which has had its challenges. And the mobile industry is also looking at frequencies in the, in the four gigahertz range. The time frame of those is unclear at, unclear at this point. But I would just say it's super important that we try to work on all of these in parallel because with 6G in particular and that spectrum band, there's gonna be an awful lot of challenges to open up the band because there are important federal incumbents that will need to either protect or potentially compartmentalize in less of the band in order to open up the spectrum for, for mobile deployments. Yeah, you mentioned WRC 23. Maybe you could go a little deeper on some of the, the key takeaways uh, from the conference at large, but also, you know, what are kind of next steps that need to be uh, top of mind as we work towards not just 6G, but uh, the groundwork for 6G? Yes, and I, I think one of the most critical pieces is showing that the um, making sure that the studies for the 6G spectrum range of 7 to 16, there were some higher frequency bands open, but the 7, 1 to 8, 4 will be critically important because the RF propagation in that range will allow um, deployments to reuse the same base stations that are being used for, for lower band deployments and provide the same level of coverage. It also will have better um, better, better um, propagation inside of buildings because the frequencies are lower. And I think some of the learnings that we have on the floor that show how we're improving millimeter wave connectivity inside of buildings, around corners and all of that will actually help with, with deployments at seven to eight four. And just to answer your question, that for us is the prime ban. And it's gonna be difficult to show that um, it's going to be able to get a significant amount of spectrum and that we can also protect the incumbents there. Another key factor for 6G is the opening of spectrum blocks that are 400 to 500 megahertz wide. We're, we're, our analyses show that 6G will continue to need wider bandwidth. So 5G is designed to use a 100 megahertz wide channel. The 4G prior to that, I think the biggest channelization was 20 megahertz. So 6G is looking to be designed with wide channels of 400. It's gonna be super challenging to open that amount of spectrum, several 400 megahertz channels in this range. Um, and I think that is gonna be needed to support the expected capacity demands for advanced technologies such as AR, VR, glasses, and things of that nature. Also wanted to touch on uh, national spectrum strategy. Uh, I think President Biden referred to spectrum as one of our most precious natural resources. But um, what are kind of the priorities of the national spectrum strategy? What do they mean for Qualcomm? Yes, yeah, so all of the bands that were identified in the national spectrum strategy are super important to Qualcomm and they're bands in which we've been working on for quite a while. The 7184 is luckily in the spectrum strategy, which is fantastic. There's also a um, 5030 to 5090 spectrum band, which is 
used for UAS connectivity. This is drone communications. And we've had a proposal at the FCC to allow drone to drone communications essentially for collision avoidance in the air. We think it's important in order to support the expected growth of drones um, in cities in particular where there could be multiple drones doing multiple things that they'd be able to communicate directly to avoid collisions and cause catastrophic you know, injury on the ground. There's also, um, in, also in the National Spectrum Strategy was the lower 37 gigahertz band. This is a millimeter wave band that interestingly the FCC first proposed to open more than eight years ago in 2016. Uh, for mobile connectivity and we've had a number of proposals that could show how this band could be shared with the federal government and we're hopeful that the FCC will move on that uh, that band as well and I would say those are the bands that we we're we're most focused on that we're in the spectrum strategy and again the 7184 for 6g is you know top of mind so there's so many moving parts here. It's different from market to market. There's also a need for global harmonization to the extent that's possible. You know, you look at 2030, you think about 6G, something's going to happen. So between now and then, how are you just feeling about the alignment? Do you think that things are coming together at the pace they need to to support the vision? That's a great question. It's still early, and I would say I'm cautiously optimistic because the reason why we started two years ago is that we knew the bands we were targeting for 6G were occupied. There's no greenfield spectrum generally out there. So we knew, hey, we're gonna have to start a conversation early, and thus far, things are moving. We're gonna need things to pick up. We're gonna need more information from the government. We're gonna need more collaboration. We're gonna need more openness and honesty. And I think we can get there because I think we have to get there. That from our view as Qualcomm, um, in order for the company to have strong national security, it really ties in directly to, make, to having economic security. And to continue to have economic growth in the US, it's critically important that 5G continue to roll out, 5G advance roll out, and 6G roll out because our, our information economy is based on the opening up of additional spectrum bands. Everything out there shows how we're continuing to wring as much capacity out of the existing spectrum allocations, but it's still not enough, which is why we need more spectrum in order to, to support that continued growth. If you're cautiously optimistic, that makes me feel very optimistic. So John, I appreciate the update on everything. Thank you.